I've just got home with these ladies because I've heard word that one of my sinister fleet of armour delivery vehicles has just rocked up with another bike that has been very kindly donated for me to take apart. Let's find out what it is. What rusty tea trolley have we procured this time? Oh, he's already got it out. <laughs> oh, it is a... Oh, what, what even is that? We're going to have some fun with this. Now, according to the Retro Bike website, and indeed my own measure, this is by no means retro. I would say anything with V-brakes was suspiciously newfangled, um, let alone anything with a carbon frame and what looks like an entire gas works behind the front mech. However, technology marches on, and these 26-inch wheels and triple chain set instantly date this bike by at least 10 years. I'd say this is a 2010 model, um, and it's for that reason that its owner, who does not share my passion for restoration or older bikes, has opted to buy a brand new one and throw this one to the chickens. Now, despite being a habitat for many an industrious spider, this is by no means a bad bike. In fact, there's a lot about it that is extremely good. Uh, now, if you haven't worked out already, it's a uh, Scott Genius 30. This was actually the mid-range bike from what was the Genius range of about 11 years ago. Um, there was a 10, a 20, a 40 and a 50. It astonishes me to imagine what the top end one must have been like because this thing's incredibly high spec. Um, the only cost saving measures I can see are things like a, an SLX chain set and shifters instead of XT or XTR, or I think it would have been SRAM XX on, on the really top end ones. SLX is fine, it's not pretty, but it's functionally not, as, uh, not that different from XT. Um, and there are bits of XT on it, although this rear mech's gone all floppy, which is why that's going to need some attention, but nothing difficult. Um, Mavic wheels, though, totally legit. Uh, no cost save there. Cross ride disc, no less, from an era when one had to specify the difference. Um, and the Schwalbe tyres are definitely an upgrade. Um, obviously, carbon mainframe and this fancy shock would have uh, made jaws drop on the bike shop floor back in the day. I'm still rather stunned by this shock. I've had more than one report from mechanics that I'm gonna have my work cut out with this monster. So watch this space for that. Um, other things of note, I talked about the Avid Elixir R brakes on my previous video about my rolling parts bin, the Bianchi. Um, also hated by many mechanics and many of my club mates, but I think these are brilliant and these ones are in really good nick. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, and perhaps the jewel in the crown, a Fox Fork. Um, to get a free Fox Fork is not a bad thing, and the Talas RL is some serious tech. Um, I do suspect this thing's going to need a service, which is going to be either very complex or expensive, but nevertheless, I'm looking forward to that. Now, there's only one reason why I would film against such an untidy and unsightly backdrop, and that is because it's jet washing time. Right, I've cleaned it and retreated into the shed to have a closer look at the good and bad of this bike. Now, there's no question the reason its owner wanted rid of it was that he'd been advised by a bike shop that this shock was a notorious pain to fix, um, was probably going to have to be sent away to be serviced. I don't yet know just how catastrophic the problem with the shock is, whether it's leaking air or whether it's wonky. I don't know what the diagnosis was, but that clearly is going to be the headache. Likewise, um, obviously the recommendation with these Fox Talas forks is that they should be regularly serviced, the process and cost of which um, becomes annoying. And when, of course, you uh, don't have a more modern bike, I totally get why he wanted one with a 27 or 29 inch wheel um, and a one by drivetrain, because of course they are so much better and so much quicker. So not being a sentimental man, he had no use for this bike. And actually, apart from those minor problems, um, there are a few other little things which I'm gonna look forward to fixing. The, uh, the free hub here is a bit dodgy. The old Mavic free hub of death is an ailment I'm quite familiar with, but I can sort that out. The rear mech was a bit floppy, but I mean, as you've probably seen in previous videos, I've got drawers full of XT rear mechs, so not worried there. The uh, saddle is tatty, but I'm gonna recover that, and you'll have seen in my previous video about the flight that I recovered. I know how to reskin these things, so I'm gonna do that in a nice leather or suede or microfiber. Um, 
Things like the SLX finishing kit, they're mid-range, they're not pretty, but you know what? They're actually in good nick. I ran a park chain checker on this to see if the chain was stretched and it isn't um, because I suspect that the gentleman that donated this bike did have it fairly regularly serviced and kept on top of things like chains and cassettes. So I suspect the gears and things are going to work pretty well. Like I said, the brakes are in good nick and of course a carbon frame and, and oh also um, bushings and pivots on full sussers tend to go floppy and these aren't. These are really uh, in pretty good nick. Um, so actually there's more good about this bike than there is bad. I don't think there's anything up front that I would really change. Bars and stem are fine. Obviously I'll put some nice pill grips on it, I think, if I can get a color to match this nice green. Um, and I think that's about it. So I'm gonna get cracking and see how far I get. If you saw my video where I reskinned the flight, you'll have seen that um, it was actually relatively easy. This is going to be even easier. These Scott own brand saddles have actually got the nose and uh, heel of the saddle held down with these bolted plastic plates. So I think if I can undo these bolts and uh, rip off this knackered old shell, I've got a lovely um, sort of microfiber cloth here. Uh, not even a faux leather. I think it's, it's more of a rubbery texture, which feels really nice. It actually feels like the body geometry saddle on my newest specialized bikes. So I'm going to use this as an experiment and see if it sticks. There's our template. There's the skin. All right, we're about halfway. Um, I've just run out of glue, so I can't do the edges until I get some. And also, I really need some sort of micro staple gun to drive the smaller staples in to keep the edges down, much like the tiny staples you see here on this body geometry saddle. Then it occurred to me, I've got a body geometry saddle and it's from 2009. So I'm just going to put this on the Scott for the time being and finish this project at a later date. Now, I think the only thing for it with this shock is to gas it up to the correct pressure for my weight and then just give the bike a damn good shakedown ride and see what happens. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was leaking air and oil, uh, given its age. Um, not going to know till I find out. Amusingly, as I um, go to attach the shock pump, I find out from the online manual that I am right at the upper weight limit for this bike and shock. Same story here with the Fox Fork. According to the manufacturer's online weights and PSI's table, I'm very near the top of the weight limit. Thanks a lot, bike manufacturers. Sounds like I need to start laying off the cakes, pies and savouries, otherwise maybe you'll see me on an e-bike before much longer. Right, I've got this thing pretty much dialed to factory setting, so let's see what a shakedown ride does to it. Aesthetically, all I've done is put a clean saddle, some pill grips on it, and generally given it the spit and polish. Um, obviously, mechanically and technically, that's where the challenge may lie. We shall soon find out, but you're gonna to have to stay tuned because that is a future video for two important reasons. First of all, it's dark and I'm not riding this thing until the weather is uh, clement. And secondly, I have a more important project to be attending to more immediately, and that is the free bike giveaway. I've been promising it for months. It's finally in my possession. So that is the project I'm starting this very evening. Please stay tuned and I hope it'll be worthwhile. Thanks for watching.